right, guys, welcome back to these episodes. And this is my second episode. I'm super lucky to have Kyla Sanchez here. Hi, if you guys. guys. If you guys don't know by now, Kyla is one of our best girl swimmers. This girl can swim anything. But just to give a little bio and Kyla can correct me as I go. Kyla has been, I think her debut in its international stage was a 2017 World Junior Championships when she won four medals there in the 200 AM, 100 free and 4x100 free relay and the 4x200 free relay. Um, <laughs> yeah, she was in the Commonwealth Games in 2018 where she... I I think you were sixth in the 50 free, correct? Yes. I think. And I think seventh in the 100 free. Uh, yeah. You won medals in the four by one and the four by two free relay. Yes. I think so. Yeah. In 2019, you debuted in the ISL, which mm -hmm. is the coolest thing in the swimming world right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were <laughs> and you were with Energy Standard, but now you're competing for Toronto Titans. Toronto and Titan. uh, that's right. You were in Guangzhou in 2019. You won two medals there in the four by 100 and four by 200 freestyle relay. And highlight of your career so far I, I would say I, I mean I don't know if you agree with that but <laughs> the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo where you got two medals in the 4x100 free relay and the 4x100 medley relay is that right correct yes well Kyla you know I think the first thing I mean I hope you enjoy talking about like the cool things about swimming because I think that's what all swimmers want to hear about is which is like your experience with the Olympics, the ISL, Worlds. Is there any difference? Which ones you like better? How mm -hmm. would you describe that stuff? So the Commonwealth Games and the Olympics are kind of similar in the fact that it's not just swimming. There's a whole village filled oh, with right. a bunch of athletes from different sports and that changes the environment that you're in. So instead of going back to a hotel eating instead you're going to a giant meal hall filled with athletes of every different sport and you're all just kind of doing your own thing and it's a very high performance professional environment mm -hmm. it's really cool and it's nerve-wracking at first to immerse yourself in it but then I guess since the Tokyo Olympic Games was my second village mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. I was more comfortable and I was able to get into the swing of things easier mm -hmm. how long do you guys go ahead of time mm -hmm. you Usually, because of COVID last year, we weren't able to do our staging camp, which is a camp where we prep and taper before the Olympics or before mm -hmm. the major meet. And we prepped in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Usually we're there two, three weeks before. So if we have a major competition, I'm away from home for over a month, usually. Wow. Wow. And that's got to be, I mean, having to concentrate for that long. Do you have to do that? Or are coaches and staff mindful that, you know, maybe you need a little bit of social life here or there to kind of distract your mind? How do, how do you guys deal with that stuff? Because it's got to be hard to concentrate for a month. Yeah. Oh, totally. You know? Yeah. Totally. I think in regards to training, because training is very routine based, it's mm -hmm. okay, well, I have to come into the pool. But then if it's just coming into the pool, then you could get too focused into swimming you want to have something else to think about so that's mm -hmm. a good point our coaches were very good with making sure sorry we did our staging camp before the olympics in vancouver right and I, I, I was vancouver, gonna say that yeah I yeah vancouver that, yeah. was open so we were able to go for walks and go to coffee shops go shopping if we wanted to as long as we were careful and that definitely helped keep our mind off of things the other thing is the bonding because with a team you're with Teammates. people from all different parts of canada and you get to see them again Again and talk or meet new people and that's also a nice way to get your mind off of the sport yeah because i mean i just remember as a so many i only made it to the trials and trials was nerve-wracking and hard to get through and that's mm -hmm. seven days or yeah six days and yeah just trying to cope with having to be and is that is that accurate to say kyla do you always try to be a hundred percent at every practice or sometimes you have to deal with ups and downs when you go through it yeah recovery is very important to me the goal is to be 100 and if I am not 100%, then 100% effort. And I think that's what pushes me to be better and makes me the athlete that I am. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just focusing on recovery and having a distraction if that is like, oh, I don't want to come into the pool. How can I enjoy my time out of the pool? So when I come to TPASC, I can make it count. Right. Yeah. And then that's, that is important, right? It's, it's important mm -hmm. to be in a good state of mind when you step into the pool deck. I mean, exactly. spe especially when you have to perform so much. I mean, you're in that, in that stage where you, you have to be ready to go, right? 
right? Every day. So yes. How do you compare your age group years with what you're going through now? Like what are, what's similar and what is very different? Mm-hmm. It's actually very similar. I think what I realize now is that I was an age grouper. And all of a sudden, I've just kind of picked up and was very open to learning new things. And it all of a sudden, I'm kind of one of the older kids in my group. And I'd say the most similar thing is the routine of training, coming in, trying to improve. So instead of a 50 free being a 50 free, it's okay, well, how can I change my breathing pattern so that 50 free is faster? Or how can I kick off the wall harder? How can I dolphin kick? And those things, when you start to focus on them in practice, practice or good ways to stay motivated and intrigued by what you're doing because you're always trying to get from point A to point B faster and faster each time. Yeah, that's that's a great word, intrigued. That's a great mm. word. I never thought about that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's trying to keep it interesting and staying curious on how, you know, so there really is no limit to how much you can break down your race. Mm-hmm. There's always something that you can you can concentrate or focus on and, and practice it every day, right? And especially in a, in a race like 53, where really nothing can go wrong, right? Right. Um, it's so fast, it's so quick. Yeah, no, and, and that's a great answer because that's, you know, as coaches, we, we observe that right and but when you're a developing athlete sometimes you know all they get to see is the cool things that you guys are doing right they don't get to see the little things that in my opinion you guys do better than none right which is so those little details that when you're an age grouper you kind of find them a little boring yeah. you find them a little it's like why am i doing this why, mm-hmm. why don't why do i need to do <laughs> why do i need to do shutters what is yeah that right? like, it's like it becomes it, but, a lot more specific for sure yeah and not only specific you guys always do it and always do it right Mm -hmm. it becomes a it becomes a habit right yes i mean i understand i was an age grouper once and i understand why swimmers sometimes don't understand that but it's great to hear you say that because it is important and i think that it actually is funny enough it's those little things that separates the best from the from the average right exactly would you agree with that i completely agree mm-hmm. <laughs> it's definitely just honing in on something to make sure that something small tenths of a second can you can get those and you can mm-hmm. improve yeah how much does your life outside of the pool i'm talking about you know what you listen in music or what you you know how you spend your spare time right you know like or or who you spend it with did that change at any point kyla when you went from again from just an age grouper developing swimmer to like now a professional athlete yeah i'd say it is different a little bit i think when i started to get into my professional career swimming it was a lot more pool home, pool home, a lot more naps. I was tired most of the day because a lot of my effort was putting 100% into the pool and what I was doing to get better. Mm -hmm. I try to spend as much time as I can with my family to help motivate me. And at the same time, school is also another thing that takes a lot of planning and making sure that I can recover and rest and also be productive outside of the pool. Yeah, you're using recovery a lot, which is, Mm -hmm. again, is one of those things that we undermine as age groupers. Right. We don't understand how much recovery actually helps. Sleep, for example, is a big one, right? Exactly. Um, I've noticed that. I'm 20 and I was 6, 17 or 16 when I first made my national team and stretching and sleeping and drinking enough water weren't things that I normally thought about. And mm-hmm. now that I'm 20, stretching has become so important. Drinking a lot of water is very, very important. And you kind of notice, especially when you swim and you train every day you notice those things and how drinking the right amount of water makes you feel so much better than if you were to not drink enough water same thing goes with stretching and other recovery aspects yeah Uh, sleeping for example right it's uh, it's one of those things (laughs) you know sometimes i think i think that an inexperienced athlete sometimes they just surrender to those feelings thinking that it's like i'm supposed to feel tired because i'm training right i'm supposed to feel shitty because i'm training it's like no you can do things about that you can, you can yeah. actually control some of those things. It's like, exactly. you know, if you pay attention and, you know, I think it leads into my next question, which is like, in my opinion is in the last decade or two decades is the most improved element of sport, which is diet, right? Right. Like, is there any, I, I know eating is always in every, every athlete's mind or at least every, you know, every athlete who's really determined to do this. You know, my swimmers always wonder if they're doing enough or not. They also wonder how much 
much energy should they really spend in watching the diet? So what do you think about that, Kyla? I think, especially as an age grouper, I didn't realize how much I was still growing and developing and trying to get stronger. And if you are training, you... There's something, and it's hard and I get it because I've had the same experience, but food is fuel. And at the end of the day, if I have a nice fulfilling breakfast before training, I'm able to push myself harder. I feel more rewarded after practice because I was able to put 100% of my effort and energy into putting everything I could in the pool. So I have Mm -hmm. the energy to do it. And I think that's just so important to realize that there's a reason why they say a good breakfast is uh, the best meal of the day. Yeah, the best meal of the day. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to have a full breakfast. I started with having yogurt and granola and having coffee. I, I don't know if you guys drink coffee, but <laughs> I love coffee. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, no, um, it's good. Coffee's good. Yeah. It's- and there were times where I realized, like, hey, I finished that workout and I could push myself right to the end. And it made me feel good and it made me feel strong and excited to compete because, oh, hey, what can I do if I feel myself right and I'm treating myself like a well fueled machine? And yeah. Yeah. A rewarding feeling. Yeah, it's it's almost like it's important to make that connection to understand that what you're putting in your body is going to it's, it's going to translate into what you can do in the water, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, like I said, in my opinion, in, in the world of sports of athletics, how we eat has become one of the most important elements in there, right? And and what we've noticed actually is that most athletes don't eat enough, right? Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's the funny thing. Most and, and athletes can eat. Yeah. And athletes can eat too. <laughs> So yeah, I, I tell my swimmers now, if there's anything that I want, like if you have the resources or you have the ability to do this, I, I do try to refer them to, uh, you know, someone who can at least look at what they're eating and just give them pointers. Hey, here's how you can clean this up a little bit. Here's how you can do it better. I know timing of food is always important too. Like yes. when you eat, how many meals do you eat a day? Kyla? Oh, one, two, three, four. For actually a general rule that I learned from a nutritionist that mm-hmm. our high performance team worked with is to make sure you don't go more than four hours without eating, whether yeah. that means having a meal or a snack. Because if, you, if you're under fueling yourself and you're going into a workout or you're going through your day, your body's going to eat at the muscle. It's not going to eat at the fat. It's, it's, gonna- gonna, it's not doing the thing that you think it is. Yeah, it, it, it works in helping you feel healthy and it's, mm-hmm. it's a nice feeling. Well, yeah. And, and like you said, it, it, it leads to other things working better, right? Like, so mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I mean, it's an important one. You really have to look at yourself as a car and food is your fuel and definitely take care of it. Right. Moving into a couple more fun stuff, I guess. For the first uh, one last question kind of that is more about your background is if there's anything you could go back in your age group years to do and I know you were a pretty good athlete when you were when you were young but if you could say to yourself I wish I'd spend doing more of this as a swimmer when I was mm-hmm. 12 11 10 what would that be that's a good question mm-hmm. I'd say specific to swimming like mm-hmm. that you think would help you be a better swimmer today I'd say probably an observation I I didn't really have a lot of older swimmers that I looked up to in young young age group swimming just because I was kind of in my own world and you know going to some practice and everything but I think I found my passion in sport when I saw videos of really good swimmers and just was like oh whoa that's cool I could stand on a podium or I could win a provincial medal or I could do things like that and it just drew my passion more I think because as an age grouper swimming was more of a routine it was go to some practice go to school go home go to sleep but back then I could have watched more videos and really honed in on that passion and I think that's something that's pretty cool to do (laughs) well that's great you said that because again i go back to all my personal theories but um i guess it's not some personal theory it's an observation right Mm -hmm. my observation is that the vast majority of young people struggle following a passion right they even struggle saying out loud that i have passion for this right right there's a fear that there's some i think it's associated a little bit with a fear of failure right it's a i think so it's it's scary it's very scary to say I want to excel on that and tell everyone that I'm going to excel on that and then you don't yeah right? I, I've experienced that for sure yeah it's tough to do that and my advice and you know you can chime in on this Kyla is is always that it's always better to do that and fail 
than not to do that and never try, never go for it. And then you live your life thinking, well, what could have been, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. I have a I, quote for that. Uh, yeah. It's better to have an opportunity than to waste one. That's right. A hundred percent. Great quote. Yeah. It's something that I, you know, it's great you said that because again, I didn't know you when you were young and, but I knew Josh well. And, mm -hmm. and that's something that I really admire about him is that he was the kid who just like, yeah, I, I, I'll look yeah. at that and go, I'm going to go after that. Yeah. And, and he would tell everybody and, and he would like, you know, people laugh at him. <laughs> look at where he's at now. I'm like, yeah. but you got to do that. You got to do that to get, you know, I'm, I'm not saying everyone can get to where you guys are at, but life is always better when you do that. When you Exactly. Look, when Don't you be afraid to pursue something and fail. Just do it. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no. hundred percent. All right. So I wanted to ask you more fun stuff, like favorite moment at the Olympics. I think I will say two. So mm -hmm. the obvious one is when I was standing on the podium with the three other girls for the four by one freestyle. Mm -hmm. And my personal favorite was I got to anchor the four by one medley relay in the morning. So the pre or sorry, the evening, the prelims. Yeah. And we have a great anchor penny for Canada. So uh, Best in the world. <laughs> to get an opportunity to anchor that relay was really special to me. I could see what I could do. And it was also my last race of the Olympic Games. And I put everything I had into that final race. And it was really special to me to yeah. contribute. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And to just see all your efforts have pan out, right? Mm -hmm. All your efforts, all the struggles that you guys go through. Like I said, you know, we, we tend to see you guys already on Mount Olympus uh among <laughs> the guys right but we don't see the everyday sweat and tears right and exactly and i always tell my swimmers you guys are the ones who probably do the most of that right of sweat and mm -hmm. tears the um, good don't come easy no no <laughs> but it feels sweet when it's that when it does come at the end eh? <laughs> for sure exactly yeah yeah that's what yeah. you work for yeah you you, you, so you talked about teammates a little bit mm -hmm. is there anybody in the team who really inspire you or you kind of you look at that person or many you know, this doesn't mm. have to be only one. You look at them and you go, if I didn't have them here, I think things would have turned out a little differently. Is there anybody like that, do you think? Oh, that's, I rely on my teammates a lot, especially through that COVID year to kind of get me through training and to keep me, you know, like excited for the next day and to come in and work really hard. So I I'd credit every single one of my teammates, the ladies, especially that like Kylie, Penny, Taylor, Rebecca, Sydney, Maggie, every single one of them they all push me in different ways and they've been there for me when times have been hard yeah and that's important right it's, it's funny how like every every great athlete that i ask this question they always focus on the psychological or the emotional side of having teammates right because sometimes people get caught up with oh i need a fast person next to me right and it's like you don't need a fast person so much as you need a good teammate that someone that, will you know, push you yeah that not it will, not necessarily will just pace with you but they'll be there with you they'll support they'll back you you know when things are tough they'll stay positive you know they'll, they'll, they'll make the environment a better one exactly and right. josh is a great example of that yeah 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 he is he he, he was a great teammate uh, absolutely i mean we've seen some amazing success on the girls side i mean you guys are arguably one of the top three in the world right now in terms of as a team right <laughs> yeah i know man it's awesome <laughs> And, and definitely the guys are, are starting to show to up too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they had a great Olympics. Is that something you guys were hoping for? Like, is that something you guys talk about? Like the girls are in a really good place. Let's cheer on the guy. I don't know. Is, is there anything around that from the team? Yeah, everyone's pretty supportive. But at the same time, I don't think our group realized how special our group was. Mm -hmm. um, we were just, we all worked so hard and we were very happy for each other's successes. So that's great to see the boys come forth at the Olympic games to, I, I think they came last at the last Olympics. I was ecstatic <laughs> yeah. and everyone swam so well. And even if they didn't swim well, we made sure that they knew that we were there for them and that there's more to come. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's, that's what drives a strong team, right? A, a great team is driven by the athletes, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's, that's important too, right? That you guys were, you said you didn't realize how, like it's, it's there's a little bit of a humility there, right? You stay mm -hmm. humble and you learn from each other. That's, that's, uh, that's amazing. I mean, th those are, those are great values. And again, like I said, like what I'm trying to do here with Kyla is that it's the similarities, right? That those, those values and those, those little things that really make a team better, right? 
is not necessarily talent and results, but how you behave and how you see each other, how you respect each other. That that really put a real good team together, right? So that's yeah. awesome. How does the ISL differ from everything else? Is, is it any different? Is it oh. different vibe? <laughs> yeah. The ISL is so much fun. Yeah, I made my first uh, national teams when I was 15, 16. So it was more about, okay, what can I, the, all the information I could take in from those high performance meets, but then from the ISL, it's okay, I'm on a team with people from all over the world, and it's getting to know them and really sitting in that environment of, okay, we're gonna race as a team. And, you know, it's kind of like a dual meet. So Mm -hmm. team versus team, and it was a lot of camaraderie. Yeah. And it got me more comfortable, again, in the international setting, because uh, everyone was very supportive. I think, yeah, what I realized is that everyone's just super nice. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) they'll, they'll help you through the competition and learning from them because they're athletes just on a different part of the planet. Yeah. Again, I want to I wanna build on that. I mean, that's a great point to bring forward, right? You can love to win and you can love to be competitive without hating your opponent, yes, right? That's true. You know, sometimes a less experienced mind is going to be resentful of someone who's doing well, right? Mm-hmm. When we don't realize that, in, especially in this sport, really, it, all that matters is how much you put in. Yes, teammates can help and yes your surrounding your atmosphere is important but at the end of the day i think that you gotta respect your rivals you gotta understand that everyone is it's very similar because of you know the path you've chosen to take and so yeah i want just want to point that out again that you know from what kyla is saying here that i, I think people need to be competitive and i think they mm-hmm. need to love to win but you also need to understand that there's there's integrity in winning there's a certain way of winning and it involves respecting your rivals and respecting the world work they put and they're respecting the work you've put and be accountable to what you've done right exactly um, so yeah. mm-hmm. ha- like make your own goals find the people that support those goals if they don't then beat them that's yeah like that's simple. that's amazing that's a great quote right there. <laughs> <laughs> plain and simple and you'll get there right like the, the to add to that is you know some people that are beating you right now may be a little more talented than you but hard work is going to pay off eventually it, it does sure. get to there especially if that talented person doesn't learn to to, to work hard so mm-hmm. um Yes. Kyla, that's all I have for now. Is there anything you want to add? Um, no. Thank you for having me. I'm no. honored to be on the show. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Kyla. Yeah, no, this is this is extremely helpful, very valuable to our athletes. So I, I want to thank you for even taking the time to doing this, really. Honestly. Thank you so much. Ooh. Bye. <laughs> Bye.